Just outside of Myrtle Beach in Pauley's Island, South Carolina is one of the top golf courses you can play in the area. It is Caledonia Golf and Fish Club. Designed by the architect who gave you Tobacco Road, this was Mike Strance's first solo design back in 1994. Strance had a unique way of creating this course, not as an engineer, but as an artist. He sketched out his design of every single hole on paper before translating it to what you see here today. Before this course was built, the owners of this land primarily used it to fish and hunt, and still today there is a fish club. I am not much of a fisherman myself, so today I tackled this Mike Strance gem. Alright, welcome to Caledonia. I'm on the first hole. I was playing all by myself. Not the best experience, but we're here. It's a beautiful day, 70 degrees. Feeling good. Let's see if my game feels good. That was my first on-screen intro ever. Since there was not a golfer in sight, I felt comfortable enough to do it. This is pretty much a straightaway par four. I pulled this one left. I should have a clear shot at the hole, but Up the left side. unfortunately, well, battery died on the rangefinder. Awesome. So we're gonna have to eyeball this. We're kind of short. I want to say we're about 80 yards. So hold down the wind breeze. We should be able to find a grip. Not having a range finder today would be a little bit of a challenge. I have about 80-ish yards. I clipped that one pretty well, but I pulled it just a little left. A little long. That rolled off the back of the green, but I have this easy chip hitting off an upslope. Would have liked to hit that just a little bit closer. Just outside of gimme range. Got this putt par. You find the back of the cup. Nice par to start the round. Move to the second hole. Probably my favorite hole on the front nine. Just look how beautiful this tee shot looks. The fairway felt a little narrow from the tee box, but I found the center of the fairway. With bunkers along the right side of the fairway, you definitely want to stay along the left side. That is exactly what I did there. Although it wasn't the best strike in the world, it would leave me with a decent number in. The weather definitely played a factor in today's round. That is a sand wedge from about 95 yards. I hit it well, but I think the wind knocked that down. Wind was swirling up there and I kept it short. As you can see here, wind picked up pretty heavily. Left that chip short again. Have a longer putt for par. And I pulled that left. I think it hit something. You can see I'm kind of a little frustrated by that putt. I would tap in for bogey. The third hole is a long par three. I have a five iron with a waste bunker covering the entire length of this shot. You definitely do not want to chunk one here. I hit that right to the flag. So let's go to the drone to see where this lands. Came up just a tad short of pin high. Leaves me with a tough uphill putt that will sling left to right. There's the sling and I hit it just a little too firm. Have a tester of a par putt but I would find the right side of the cup. Nice little par putt, we'll move to the fourth hole. The fourth hole is a dog leg right into a slightly elevated green. I pulled my tee shot slightly left, but would find the fairway. Wanted to cover the right side of the fairway more to get a small yardage in. So leaves me with about 162 yards. That is a five iron. Wind is in the face. I struck that one very well. This would leave me with about 25 feet for birdie. Putting uphill, just didn't have enough pace, but would settle for a par. Fifth hole, straight away, par four. Wind is off of the left, and that just pushed my ball 15 yards offline. We find the right side rough. I remember this being a very funky lie. It was like a hard pan rough, and just shanked it. I don't even know what you would call that, like a shank chunk. Leaves me incredibly short-sighted with a tucked pin. There is a swale on the green, and if you catch the wrong side of it, like I did just there, the ball will run away from the pin. This is quite an interesting putt. It starts uphill and will work its way down the hole. I just didn't start it left enough. 
The pace wasn't terrible, but I do have this six footer for par. And I am starting to make some putts. That saved me from getting a double bogey. We'll move to six hole, 160 yards. That is a six iron. Wind in the face, struck that one really well. Just didn't have the draw that I normally have. Hit it pretty much dead straight, which I will take every single time. This is my best look at birdie so far. Just trying to tap it down the slope. Come on. And we drain it. Taking back the bogey we had on the previous hole. Move to the seventh. I would say the seventh probably competes with the second hole as the best on the front nine. Hit that one right down the middle of the fairway. The driver's working really well so far. The most difficult part about this approach shot right here is that there's a tree that is guarding this pin. That was my attempt at a fade. I don't think it faded, but it worked out really well. I have about 20 feet here for birdie. Going back to the drone cam. You can see I left it just a tad short, but would have a nice tap in for par. Playing very well so far, just one over. Move to the par five, eighth hole. You see those bunkers out to the right. I'm aiming just left of them. Although I don't think they came into play unless I hit it poorly, which I certainly did not. Would leave me with about 245 yards in. I'm laying up. Can't really go for the green here. There is a hazard that runs across the fairway 190 yards from where I was. That pretty much describes my game in general. <laughs> so we have 103 yards here. That is a pitching wedge. Wind picked up slightly. That is usually my gap wedge, but I did not want to come up short of the screen. Turned out to be the right club choice. I just drew it a little too much. The greens so far have been deceptively tough. Because I played this course in December, the greens are probably slower than usual, which obviously benefited me. That would leave me with just a nice little tap in for par. Stayed at one over, moving to the ninth. And if you remember my rangefinder died, I've been relying on the carts for yardages. The number I had was 110 yards, but just based off the eyeball test, I knew that was wrong. It was more like 90, but at the time I went with 100 yards, ended up overshooting the green, chipping back on, and this was a wonderful chip. Kind of short-sighted myself, and I ended up with about an eight foot putt for par. I did not see that much of a break in that putt. I guess that's why I am an amateur. But after nine holes, I certainly didn't feel like one. I am two over 37 with really no major blemishes on the scorecard. And that is mainly because I'm hitting fairways and greens. I am 66% from both fairway regulation and green and regulation. And on top of that, my putting hasn't been dismal. The course is in great condition. However, weather would not be on my side as I head to the back nine. The 10th hole is the only par five on the back nine. I had been hitting my driver really well up to this point. Thankfully, the course was quiet as I drove the ball across the road onto hole number one. All right, you see that gap right there? I wanna try to hit it. Didn't hit it. Didn't hit the gap, but I smacked the hell out of that tree. That is a four iron laying up left of the green because the tree was in the line of the flag. Absolutely flushed that four iron. Left me in a really good spot, just 60 yards away from a front pin location. And other than sculling that ball, that was the worst possible outcome. You can see why I said this was the worst possible outcome. The pin was in such a wonderful location on this day, and my ball is currently going through Death Valley. Maybe a bit of an exaggeration. That was actually a wonderful putt. Got about a four footer for paw, or for bogey, actually. And, uh, oh no. Oh no. We're gonna have to take a look at a replay on this one, and this just does a full 360. That is the first blemish on the scorecard with a double bogey, and we will move to the par 3 11th. That is a 5 iron from 171 yards, and I will regret to club down in a few seconds. The wind was picking up and swirling in all directions by this point, so I thought I needed more club. Oh, wow. I hit that so good. So good, it left me short sided, pitching onto a down slope, and that ball will run away from the pin. 
It was inevitable that I would have a 30-foot putt coming back for par. On a nice line, but I just didn't hit it hard enough. Leaving with about a 5-footer for bogey and would knock it in. Saving myself from going back-to-back -back double bogeys. The 12th hole is a dog leg right. The wind is definitely picking up and I have a nice tailwind. I took on a little too much of this dog leg and was worried it would end up in the fairway bunker. If it wasn't for this wind, I'm sure it would have been in the bunker, but I carried over it. Only 130 yards, that is a pitching wedge. And you can tell from that sound, that is an amateur's worst nightmare. The dreaded fat shot. Thankfully, I had some green to work with, but this wind is absolutely nuts. It would be like this for the rest of the round. I thought I landed this chip shot short of my target, but look at that ball roll out. I almost thought I made it. Leaves me with a nice three foot putt for an up and down. And I found the side door, but it went in. Nice par, move to the 13th hole. Dog leg left, and this is not, not the shot shape you want for this hole. I was hitting back into this crosswind and that ball went 30 yards further right than it would have under normal conditions. <laughs> Leaves me in this fairway bunker. And yeah, it's starting to get bad on the 13th hole. I always have at least one or two bad holes. This right, would well, be it. I'm in the woods. Bathroom, no shot I'm just going to chip a 7 iron into that bunker and hopefully get out of the bunker. The double bogey. That is the goal. Double bogey. So you hear my plan of attack, trying to chip a seven iron out, and that was going along the cart path, hitting a tree. All right. Overall, though, that was not the worst outcome. Just had to hit it out of those leaves. I did successfully land on the green. All I have to do now is two putt, get out with a double bogey, like I said, but that putt. Definitely the worst putt I've had the entire round. And then the wind picks up. Missed that putt by a mile. Would tap in for a triple bogey. Pissed off that I am six over on the last four holes. We come to the 14th hole and I hit what I think is the best drive of the day. Absolutely pummeled that drive down the center of the fairway. Leaves me with just a pitching wedge in. You can hear the wind. I hit that one really well. I thought it was all over it, and I hit it long. You can see I'm getting a little angry, a little mad at myself. That was a great strike, and it was just the wrong club choice that made me have this extremely long putt for birdie. I had to die that ball right at the top of the slope, and I just hit it a little too firm. Looking to salvage par with a 10-foot par putt, and I found the side door. What a putt for par. I had to have it. We moved to the 15th hole. Dog leg left. I kind of drop kicked that tee shot. I didn't get a lot of distance on it, but I did find the fairway. And you can kind of see the raindrop starting to fall. 203 yards. I got a four iron in hand. Just trying to cover that bunker on the right side. Get over the bunker. All right, it's over the bunker. Not only was it over the bunker, but I actually found the green. You can thank the wind for that. Putting for birdie. And that was a very tepid attempt for birdie. Leaves me with about a three foot putt for par. And look at me reading that putt right. It's getting dark out, guys. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make this. Within 30 seconds of me saying that, the clouds came, the rain picked up, the wind sure as hell picked up. It looks a lot brighter on camera than it did in real life. I didn't really know where that ball went. After a few minutes of searching, I found it just punching out with, I think it was a five iron. Pretty good punch out. Leaves me with just 102 yards in. That is a gap wedge. It is not a pitching wedge. I'm learning from my mistakes. I tugged it just a hair left, but would leave me with about 20 to 25 feet for par. I have to crush this ball up the slope not much movement on this putt, which is kind of rare. Caledonia, giving you the thumbs up while the rain is coming down. Have a nice tap in for bogey. All right, so I am currently hiding underneath the tree. 
I don't even know if that's a smart thing right now, but there's no thunderstorms. It's just a lot, a lot of rain. So we've got a little bit of a delay. Hopefully I'll be able to finish the last two holes. You know what, I am gonna finish the last two holes for the program, for you guys. After about a 20 minute delay, the rain let up just enough for me to continue. Move to the 17th hole is a par three. That was an eight iron. Don't catch the bunker. I did catch the bunker. And there is nothing worse than playing out of a bunker when it's raining. I remember when I hit this shot, I thought I hit this past the pin off the green, but it turned out to be a wonderful bunker shot. It was just one of those days where everything felt right. Putting for par. <laughs> yeah, we're going to need to see a replay on that one. Show me the back door. Give me three steps. What an up and down. Let's move to the final hole in what is considered the signature hole on this course. The fairway is rather narrow, especially from the tee box. And the approach shot is a lot tougher with water hazard. And to make it even more tougher, kind of like Piners number two, the clubhouse is right next to the green. So when the course is crowded, you can expect some eyes on your shot. I was a little bit nervous that there was too much cut on this ball, but it turned out to be perfect. It's in the fairway, but with it being car path only, I couldn't get a yardage for the shot. I went with a guess that it was around 106 yards in. That was a six iron and I hit it perfectly. All right, right number. Right number and also hit a slight fade which is uncharacteristic of me, but left me with a nice 20 foot putt for birdie. I gave it some pace, but it broke just a hair right. It would have a nice tap in for par. I can see why that's a signature hole. I beat the rain. I beat the rain indeed. I shot an underwhelming seven over 42 for a final round of 79. Kind of got off to a slow start to kick off the back nine, especially with that triple bogey but finished in style going one over in the last five holes. You can see from the numbers, they were not nearly as good as the front. Some missing fairways, poor approach shots cost me, especially on the 10th and 13th hole. But overall, shooting in the 70s is a tough feat, especially at a course like Caledonia. Speaking of, I can see why this course is Golf Digest's 85th best public course to play in America. It has a great low country vibe and a challenging layout that is in fantastic condition. Considering there are so many courses you can choose from at Myrtle Beach, this is definitely a course you want to play during your stay.